welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Anarchy Analysis LEC and starting now the LCS predictions for week three of the LEC and week one of the LCS. Now, today we've got a lot of games to go through in terms of the fact that there's in total 25 matches. No, I am not kidding. We're having an LCS bumper card of games. There's 15 in total because they've increased the amount of matches in the LCS this year. So we're going to have to rush through our predictions today. Nothing to worry about. So, before we get into this week's predictions, let's go over the results to last weekend. And obviously, I haven't included the LCS yet. They will be included now with the first official week. But last weekend, obviously, TL won the lock-in tournament. And over in the LEC, let's go over results that we got wrong. Schalke versus SK. I predicted an SK win. Schalke decimated them. Um, next big upset would be our Anarchy Analysis match of the week last week. Misfits versus SK. SK won there. Other big upsets for us was Schalke beating G2, so in total we only dropped 3 games last week, giving us a total of 7 out of 10, putting us very nicely onto 17 points, which is a very nice thing to get in the first 2 weeks of the split, out of a total of 25 games I do believe, so we're literally only 8 points behind maximum pointage. Now, without further ado, let us jump into our predictions for this weekend. So, we kick off this prediction section in the LCS. We've got 15 games to talk about here, and we'll start with TSM vs FlyQuest. The Summer Split Grand Finals last year was the two te these two teams fighting for first and a first seed into worlds baby and honestly this game i'm intrigued because we haven't seen these two lineups face off yet this year and tsm had a bit of a ropesy performance during their run in the lock-in tournament and flyquest had the same although they were playing with subs and coming into week one I am aware that both teams will have both full rosters and this should be very interesting to see and I have gone with TSM here. I feel that they improved literally game after game during the lock-in tournament but were just outclassed when it got to the quarterfinals and they were unable to get the job done there. Now, coming into week one, I feel that they should be showing up in an incredibly strong fashion here and doing a lot of work against FlyQuest. Our second matchup this week will be an absolute banger as it features Team Liquid and Immortals going onto the Rift. And to me, I would have covered this if I hadn't already covered Team Liquid in a Anarchy analysis. What's more, I did them on a literal best of five series. <laughs> which you guys haven't seen yet. It's coming out soon. Trust me, I'm writing scripts for him. Anyway, let us go over this match. I feel it's very one-sided, I'll be honest. Yes, Immortals have been practicing with their actual roster instead of the sub-roster they used for the login tournament, but I have to give the win to Team Liquid here. They're just on a different level and something that's very hard to stop, I would say. Our third matchup is one that is interesting to me because it's technically the two teams that fell in the semi-finals of the lock-in tournament in Evil Geniuses and 100 Thieves. And to me, this matchup is kind of interesting because of the fact that these two teams faced off in the lock-in tournament group stage and 100 Thieves won that matchup and it was close. 
it was down to the wire, and honestly, I've gone with 100 Thieves again. E.g., to me, I feel our team that could be top 4, top 5, definitely playoff contenders this year. But 100 Thieves, I just feel a slightly better with them basically being the Golden Guardians of last year, with a far better top lane, and looking to basically snowball through this Evil Genius's lineup. Three matches down, 22 more to go, and this is a matchup that I feel is very one-sided. Golden Guardians taking on Cloud9. Now, Golden Guardians in the lock-in tournament were, I guess you would say, that very odd team that picked up a win here or there against certain teams and then lost every other game that you'd expect them to lose. Now, this matchup versus C9, I feel can only go one way yet again. It's going to C9 because Golden Guardians aren't the best. The last matchup on Friday sees CLG and Dignitas taking to the Rift for a close matchup, I would say, except for the fact that CLG probably will have their full squad going into battle here with Finn joining in the top lane and Broxa in the jungle. Now, to me, this lineup didn't get a fair showing in the lock-in tournament because of the fact that some of their squad were missing. But coming into this matchup, I feel it's going to be close. Dig have got the mechanically gifted players in Dardoch, in Afromu in their lineup, and what do you CLG have? Well, they have a top laner who was very weak, weak side, and a jungler who was touted as one of the best EU junglers going over to NA, but he hasn't had the best showing since he's come over here. And looking at this matchup, I feel that CLG will win this one, but it's going to be very, very close, and one that teams are going to have a lot of hopes that's going to be going in either way for playoff spots later into the year. Jumping into Saturday's matches, we kick it off with the Anarchy Analysis matchup of the week. FlyQuest, Evil Geniuses, entering the rift for an all-out brawl, and to me, this is the matchup of the week because it hits many criteria. FlyQuest bringing in a squad that didn't perform too well during the lock-in tournament. Obviously, they didn't have the full lineup with Jose Diodo finally joining them in the last stages of the tournament, and they obviously showed up when he was on that lineup. However, going up against EG, the squad that performed ever so well, getting knocked out granted in the semi-finals of the lock-in tournament, and in my opinion, this matchup is going to be close. I have gone with Evil Geniuses, and I want to put a emphasis on the bot lane matchup. It's Deathly versus Johnson. Now, both of these two ADCs, I would say a uh, new blood ADCs to the LE, LCS, as the likes of the double ifs and the Svens of the LCS, who one of them isn't playing anymore, are the old guard, I would say. These two are new blood. These two are players looking to prove themselves, and Johnson had a standout performance last year on Dignitas, kind of netting him an upgrade, I would say, to a better roster this year, and to me, Daphne's joining one of the strongest looking squads this year. The only role that I'd say was weak was the ADC role, and he's having to show up, which he is doing incredibly well with in this year, and show why he's been picked up to this Evil Geniuses lineup. And coming into this matchup, Evil Geniuses are my favorites, and who I think will win, and obviously we'll have a look-see at that game once we've seen it and break it down for you next week end. Seven heaven now for our seventh matchup as Dig TL go on the rift. Dig TL. TL dig. TL win. We are halfway through our LCS games now, ladies and gentlemen. 
and we've got a matchup I think will be good and scrappy 100 Thieves CLG on the Rift. Honestly, this is a 100 Thieves win in my opinion personally, because CLG just aren't up to the same level as 100 Thieves just let yet. And honestly, they haven't had the same amount of time to prepare together as 100 Thieves have, and I feel if there's going to be an upset, this might be one, and CLG could kind of sneak the game away from 100 Thieves, but it's a 100 Thieves favoured matchup in my opinion. Well, it's time for probably our first banger matchup for this weekend, as it is TSM taking on C9, two teams that finished top four last year, TSM obviously winning the entire goddamn league and C9 being kicked out of the top, well, the semi-finals by TSM and to me this matchup is favoured towards C9, but this is a matchup that yet again could go either way. TSM have been on a hot cold streak through this year so far, they've picked up wins where people thought they wouldn't and they've lost games that people thought they would. And honestly, this matchup I think TSM loses, but C9 yet again could just get absolutely decimated by TSM in draft like they were against TL. Anyway, that's enough said, let's move over to our next matchup. We end out the day on Saturday with Immortals vs Golden Guardians on the Rift, and to me this is a matchup that's going to be close, it's going to be an all-out bloodshed brawl between these two lineups, and to me it should be going in favour of Immortals, I feel that they have obviously been investing time into their new roster instead of putting it into the locking tournament which was a shock, obviously Xerxes was not over here in the LCS, and as such I feel that they could basically out damage the Golden Guardians and just outmatch them on the Rift. That's my honest opinion here, and for me, it's why I've gone with Immortals over Golden Guardians. The first matchup on the Sunday sees FlyQuest and Team Liquid on the Rift, and I honestly feel this is one sided, but it's the closest one sided matchup we're gonna get as I've gone with Team Liquid beating FlyQuest here. And I don't know when I'm going to say Team Liquid aren't going to lose a match. There's realistically only two teams I would say that to in the current state of the LCS. And they haven't faced them yet. Obviously, from week one, they don't get to face that many teams. And the opponents they are facing aren't the strongest, in my opinion. So I've got my Team Liquid winning here over FlyQuest. As I just feel that there's a lot more synergy on this Team Liquid lineup. And they've just won the locking tournament and shown why they're so strong. EG, Golden Guardians, on the rift. Golden Guardians, kind of meh. EG, very strong. EG, winning. Could upset. That's all you need to know. C9, INT onto the rift for the third match on the Sunday. And to me, this matchup can realistically go either way. You've got a lot of players meeting yet again against one another as Xerxes takes on Perks in a rivalry that was in EU back when OG was actually good at League of Legends and G2 were at the top of their game dealing with the jungler who came to kill their win streak in the LEC and honestly this matchup for me is going to C9 I just feel that they're stronger of a roster who can technically just tilt full in games which possibly is a thing that will happen here but who knows and yeah I've gone with them over IMT here and personally I feel it should be an absolute banger of a match the second to last LCS matchup sees another repeat matchup that we have technically covered as an anarchy analysis matchup of the week TSM CLG yet again battling it out on the Rift for our first week's action. And to me, this matchup is yet again going to TSM. It's going to be close. It's going to be very, very fiery between these two lineups. After that Maokai pick, 
brought in by Sword Art into that bot lane kind of just upset the meta and realistically won TSM that game in a very handily fashion. And to me, I've gone with TSM yet again beating CLG. That win record between these two lineups is so huge in favor of TSM that they're just gonna do it yet again. The final LCS matchup in this weekend's games is 100 views taking on Dignitas. Now for me, this is yet again a very one-sided matchup as you have Dig, who haven't looked strong in a while, versus 100 Thieves, who have been very, very strong. Probably one of the strongest teams in the LCS this year. And as such, I've gone with them beating Dignitas in a very clean and easy fashion. And obviously, it's going to be interesting to see all these games and how they turn out in the LCS because there isn't that good of a sample size between all these lineups playing up against each other yet. And when we see that, I'm honestly going to be intrigued to see where I put each team in their final or in their results each week. LCS is now over and done with for week number one. Let's jump over to week number three in the LEC. We've got Misfits XL as our first matchup and to me, this is a close matchup. Misfits have been up and down in their performances. Beating out Fnatic in week number one was the highlight of their week. But the rest of the games have been hit or miss against all of their opponents. And XL are kind of on a similar path. And to me, I feel that XL will beat Misfits in this game. And it's going to be, though, very close. And I would honestly say it's a battle of the bot lanes. Kobe and Vanda, a very strong bot lane duo, versus Patrick and Torre, a bot lane duo that apparently goes behind early in terms of CS advantages, but turns it around in the late game, showcasing a lot of strength in team fighting and their mechanical skills. And as such, going into this matchup, I would have said Misfits, but I've gone with XL is my actual big brain choice here just because I feel that mechanically in late game team fights is going to be very very close and XL might just pip Misfits to the post. SK and Mad enter the rift for the second LEC game and to me this one a lot of people have probably gone with Mad Lions winning this just because they're a solid squad who have been doing quite well this year. But on the other side of the rift, you have SK who's overshining most people's predictions as to where they finished. They've obviously outshined mine so far. And to me, I feel it's going to be the show of the support. Treats versus Kaiser. You have the LEC Rookie of the Year in Kaiser for the Spring Split winning that award. And then you have Treats, who was TSM support or sub support last year. Who came in he's an academy champion winner of the world championship for the academy rosters and in my opinion he is a very solid support who has shown a lot of success here in Europe and to me that's gonna be key to this matchup and I've honestly gone with X SK winning here over the Mad Lions even though I feel it's going to be a very close affair between these two lineups. You guys love the short and sweet prediction, so this one's going to be one of them. G2 Vitality, G2 win, G2 bounce back from loss against Schalke. SO4 versus Rogue, the G2 Slayers versus technically the first in the league in Rogue. And to me, this is an interesting matchup. Two rosters who have been at the top of their game right now. A lot of people after week one had doubts in Schalke in terms of their performance going one and two in the opening weekend, but they've shown through week two going perfect two and oh and demolishing G2 in such a strong fashion that they can run with the big boys. And to me, Rogue is their biggest test other than G2 this year. And I've gone with Rogue winning this like I went with G2 beating Schalke, but this could be a matchup that goes to Schalke 
and shows the world that Schalke are not to be messed with or put lower than these top teams in the LEC. The last matchup on the Friday is Astralis and Fnatic hitting to the rift for a matchup that's between two teams that haven't been performing well this year so far. And to me, this matchup should go to Fnatic. Astralis, yes, have done well. They've picked up a win. Congrats to them. But Fnatic, you look at the players on this roster. Niski, a champion in NA. He's won that league. You have Selfmade, so close, so far. The superstar jungler in the LEC that's just been ing off on carry jungles. And then you have Whippo, who's just that top lane menace with Hilly and Upset in the bot lane. And to me, I feel Fnatic should win this. So this is their, what I would call, tester match to decide whether or not Fnatic will do well this year. And their last matchup, they were a completely different Fnatic coming onto that rift. They just tore it apart and won in a very dominant fashion. And that is a huge thing to note. And it's why Fnatic winning this game would be instrumental into revamping the lineup into going for top spot. As it is close, we're only week three. We've played, what, four matches after this day they'll be done. And that is a huge thing to note because these two lineups will be looking for a chance to get back into the top spots. Our final five games for this video are upon us and we kick it off with Misfits and Schalke on the Rift for me. This is a matchup that's very instrumental on how the results turn out for the previous day. Miss if Misfits beat XL, I feel that they'll be coming into this matchup fired up and ready to go. And same with Schalke. But I feel this matchup can only realistically go one way, even if it is this close. I've gone with a Schalke win over Misfits. I just feel that Misfits are still trying to find their feet, I guess you would say. Even if they have looked very impressive this year with their roster, I still feel that Schalke just are going to be better than them. XL SK SK wins this SK just look better than XL I don't know why I am singing this cuz I feel XL just will be decimated and they may have won the previous day in terms of my predictions but I just feel that SK the bot lane but with Jezu and Treats are gonna go come firing on all cylinders to show why Jezu is a better ADC than the all-pro ADC of last split. Mad Vitality now for our third match on the Saturday. And to me, a matchup could go either way like this one. As Vitality have been up and down in their performances. And Mad have been kind of on the up, I would say. And Mad to me just slightly outclass Vitality. And although Vitality have been trying to go through the bot lane, I just feel that Mad's bot lane will outshine this Vitality bot lane and showcase why many fear Kazi and Kaiser's combination together on the Mad picks that they can pull out for their lineup. Our second to last matchup sees Rogue and Astralis on the rift, and it is a rift battle between these two teams as there's a massive gap on the leaderboard between them as Rogue sits comfortably on top of the league with G2 just below them and then Astralis is right near the bottom. These boys haven't been performing too well this year although they've looked promising in the plays that they go for it's just not been enough. Now will it be enough to beat Rogue in this game? No! I've gone with Rogue winning and Rogue winning in a very demolishing fashion. Although Astralis are a team that I feel could beat Rogue. It'd just be one of them surprise wins that's classed as an upset, even though Astralis don't have him anymore on their lineup. Nevertheless, 
let's move into our final matchup, which you can probably tell is going to be something special for us because we haven't had an A year, A for the LEC yet. So we just hinted to it, and oh boy, it is it. It is our Anarchy Analysis Matchup of the Week. The one and only match of the week that we're matching to the LECs. G2, Fnatic, on the Rift, once again facing off against each other. It is a rematch of the LEC Summer Split Finals. And will G2 stomp Fnatic with Reckless facing off against his old team? Damn right they will. I've gone with G2 here. Fnatic haven't been on their top game and usually when it comes to facing G2 they're coming in guns are blazing and firing on all cylinders to try and take down this lineup and to me I feel they will be doing that but it's not at the right level of strength yet I feel that honestly Fnatic need to grow a lot more to be on the top tier teams levels the likes of the Rogues and the G2s, they're not there yet. And personally, I think this is going to G2 in a very dominant fashion. And although it is a matchup that I'm saying is going to be dominant for G2, I don't feel comfortable sticking any player from either team into my LEC fantasy team at all. I feel that it is going to be that hard to predict normally so I can't realistically stick any player from either team into my lineup and that's gonna be it with this matchup and that's gonna be it for this video we have no Twitter predictions for this week only the lock-in tournament so far and playoffs are when we realistically get to have those and as such as we're only week four in the LEC we're nowhere near that baby and as such, it's time we say goodbye in this video. If you've enjoyed this episode of the Prediction Series, leave a like down below. Subscribe now if you want to. And I will see you guys next time. Peace out.